So, uh, thank you very much for the excellent opportunity for this session where we had, uh, you see the, you know, excellent lecture hearing from Dr. Vimal and I was very proud that he has presented very nicely the importance of focus and thought provoking, thought provoking ideas from Dr. Vivek where he saw that the, the importance of research in point of care ultrasonography and it is catching like wildfire. I'll give, just before I begin my talk, I'll just give you a sense what the examiners they think in when they go examiner, in examinee at the, when in emergency medicine, they see that one of the very bright skill or you know good quality skill which the students they have picked up is focus in any most of the residency program in India. And there is good quality research coming out, thesis, good thesis is coming up across, across the country. So that is a very good sign for the penetration of this technique in uh, various domains of emergency or acute care. Okay, so you saw uh, uh, since yesterday we have been talking about highly intense, you know, uh, topics and what happens if the patient arrests. And if you see it hap and we are seeing in the living in the era, we have seen various paradigms of doing CPR. We have been seeing do people doing pathetic CPR. We have been uh, seeing patients, you know, people doing high quality CPR. And it has also happened, you see, that the, the, the first person of our country actually died while giving a lecture and even he did not give, got any CPR. And let's see, you know, when we talk about this paradigm, you must be thinking we are talking about the ultrasound guide CPR, oh come on, give me a break, you must be thinking like that. So that is the paradigm we are talking and what happens to this guy who is doing, going to do CPR in the next few couple of minutes, have a look on that.
Samaritan act, actually. And how many of us actually will do it on the roadside? He used what is called the Jugar technology. Yes, it is a proven and accepted word in Oxford Dictionary. And he used what is called the frugal innovation. And today we are going to use point of care sonography as a frugal innovation while doing a intense high quality CPR. And what we are going to do is move on with a case scenario. Is a young gentleman who has a fracture femur and he was immobilized for two weeks, almost two weeks and comes to the ER with an unresponsive state. He is unresponsive for 30 minutes. You do a check a carotid pulse, it is not palpable. You provide, start doing a high quality code blue. High quality CPR alerted, the people are assembled, you know, and the chest compression begins. And every person, the team leader is doing an orchestra of resuscitation by allocating responsibility to persons, doctors, nurses, paramedics, and assigning the role and responsibility uh, within minutes. And you see, each minute is critical. And you see, the, the monitor shows a VF and the defib starts. And here, the, the cycle of defib, you know, the chest compression, the things goes on. And then the TN, then you see the IV lines are put, then the team leader thinking, why the patient arrested? In this clinical context, we think of a venous thromboembolism because the patient was immobilized. While he is thinking and doing assimilating things, you see that it can happen both in, in patients with medical cause of cardiac arrest, it can in traumatic cardiac arrest, it can happen. And it was a case of traumatic cardiac arrest, which I just uh, uh, means in an enumerated. And there is algorithms, people do talk less about the traumatic cause of cardiac arrest many a times. So you see both ATLS and ERC guideline have published the use of you know, the, the algorithm to save lives in traumatic cardiac arrest. And they used, they have used, you know, limited, limited, both these algorithms do not speak much about using point of care ultrasound. The AHA have recently, you know, in 2015 guidelines has incorporated that tube confirmation while doing a CPR should be done by ultrasound guide. So let us discuss this topic in quick, uh, last, next 30 minutes. Is there a need for using point of care ultrasonography? Can we pick up treatable causes of cardiac arrest? Can we do procedures by using ultrasound? And we know that most of the cardiac, uh, you know, the arrest algorithm is labor intensive, high intensity, takes a lot of efforts. Is our effort going to be fruitful or it will be futile? So from the, the statement from flying, the very statement from flying blind to flying right, whenever there is a arrest, we straight away jump, start doing chest compression, and then we keep on thinking why the patient arrested. Many a time we just do blindly. We have to, so what are the pitfalls is if there are a patient of tamponade, you straight away go and goes into arrest. You don't know patient has tamponade, and you keep on pressing the chest. Will it, is it going to come back? He's not going to come back. A patient with tension pneumothorax goes into arrest. Without relieving that, is he going to come back? No, he's not going to come back. So you have to differentiate between a PEA and a pseudo PEA. You have to determine cardiac standstill many a times, flat line protocol. You have to check in two, three leads before you're saying it is a complete flat line. And it is important to determine cardiac standstill from fine VF, you know, and can we you know, pick up mistreatable causes of pulseless electrical activity, especially the, the, you know that you can pick up the, uh, the mnemonic of T's and H. I'm sure everybody should know that. So we know that you can pick up, you know, tension pneumothorax, you can pick up, sorry, pneumothorax, you can pick up hypovolemic shock, you can pick up cardiac tamponade, Okay, these are the causes and whether the bleeders are there. You can pick up thrombosis coronary and thrombosis pulmonary. So you can do, you can pick up these conditions, you know, by using a focus. So in the era of ever-changing guidelines from ABCs to CAB, 15 is to 2 to 30 is to 2, and now ACL is saying in 2015 guidelines, you can do tube confirmation by ultrasonography. So that means there is a case for using sonography during cardiac arrest. So that is what we looked at the literature, it's an old literature in 2008 where resuscitation says that you can pick up these conditions 
including guiding transvenous spacing. So that's why errors can occur anywhere. It can occur in the pre-hospital case scenario, en route in the ambulance, in the ER, anywhere. So here, because of, you know, it requires miniaturization of machines. The machines have become like smartphone, which I saw in the last slide of Dr. Wemmel, where he said it has become like a smartphone, you can carry it. So that means you can use it, use it on wherever situation is. You know, you can use it en route in the ambulance, you can use it in the air, you can use it in the field, in the battlefield. So you can use it anywhere because of its portability of machine. Number two, you require, while doing CPR, you require two things. You require a man and a machine. Machine we took, talked about. What about the man? You should be highly skilled enough. You know, you should be quite proficient by, uh, for using ultrasound during arrest time. Or novice, or intermediate, usually is imp you're not sufficient enough to do during cardiac arrest because intensity is high. And a separate person has to do sonography, not the code blue team. Okay? So that's what, but when and how? This is the question we need to ask. Because everything is going on, you know, it is going high quality. So what we did is, we looked at this and we published our, our algorithm, the AIMS CLIP protocol. We published in API textbook of medicine, where we said that as soon as the patient comes, you do a pulse check, initial pulse check, and start doing chest compression. For the first two minutes, you continue doing, because by the time you require to assemble your human resource, Number two, assemble the machine. You need to boot it up. You have to start it. It takes time, isn't it? So you cannot actually be a hindrance to the chest compression. So first two minutes after you give the first cycle, the first five cycles you give, by the time you are the sonographer is ready, okay? And then in that 10 second rhythm check, now there is no pulse check, but rhythm check you have 10 second loop. So you should do as early as possible. See, you should not, that is the maximum limit. That means you should be doing less than nine minutes. Okay, and ask, focus questions, what you need to do? Is my heart beating? Yes or no? Okay, is there a pericardial fluid present? Yes or no? Is there a tamponade present? Yes or no? Is there a regional wall motion abnormality? Yes or no? Is the chamber right, ventri right ventricle looking like a left ventricle? Is it yes or no? Is the ejection fraction looking normal or poor? Yes or no? So you need to ask in focus questions, in binary question and binary answer. If you don't get an answer, if you get an answer that is a tamponade, what I'll do? Put a needle, right? If I don't find the answer, continue chest compression, you know, immediately. And go to the next cycle when it comes. Next 10 second loop you'll get then you do a lung ultrasound and do a, only do lung sliding sign. That's it. Present or absent. Especially in traumatic cardiac arrest, if it is absent, put in a needle. You know, immediately in the fifth intercostal space, in the mid axillary line, five second here, five second there. If you don't find an answer, continue chest compression and go back to the third segment, the IVC. So here you have to do what is called an organ talking. The cardiac, the lung, and the IVC. You have to see the, how the organs are talking to each other and understand if you don't find any answer, go to the IVC. So let's see a few index cases. Dr. Wimmel will help me in that. A young gentleman, he, again, the first one which we talked about was this, you know, the case, same case when we began. Let's see what happened. The CPR started, you know, and we, as per the CLIP protocol, let's start and see what happens in C. You know, so we'll play the hyperlink and I'll show you. Here, you can see, highlight, yeah, goal, 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 yeah, not happening, okay, okay, okay. So you, here you see the right ventricle, you know, is dilated, is looking more, you know, uh, you know, it dilated strain than the left ventricle. So that means there is a right ventricular strain. So this feels that it is in sync with our diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. Okay. So let's go to the, you know, lung and see so what, what we are seeing. So there is lung sliding is present. So there is nothing in the lung. 
So third, yeah. look at the IVC. In this, for understanding the physiology, you see that just for explanation sake, uh, IVC is dilated here. Okay, so it is in physiological sync with the pulmonary embolism. So let's look at is there a venous thrombus? So let's put our probe and see in the femoral vein. And you can see here, yeah, you point from there only. Yeah, you can see all of you can see a ecogenic shadow in the femoral vein. So that means, you know, there is a thrombus sitting there. Okay, shall I compress, Satish? Shall I compress there? No? Okay, good. So I should never compress. What you will do next? What you will do next, Satish? Pulmonary embolism. What you will do next? Give LT place, you know, IV. You should be quick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let us go to the next case. He is a young gentleman. He had a penetrating trauma to the chest. Okay, come runs responsive. You start CPR and let us see what happens in the cardiac one, cardiac window. You can see here, yeah, just point out. You can see the heart is beating, okay. There is pericardial fluid and you see there is a tamponade, you know. So you can see the heart is dancing in the lake of blood like this, swinging motion. If you see a EKG, it will cause the electrical alternance, correct. What you will do next? Yeah, you will put a needle and do a pericardial synthesis, you know, quickly. And the B, you know, yeah, now this is cause a tension failure. Next is B. This patient, the BP came up, you know, he had a pulse, again it went down, you know. So what are you seeing here? There is a absent lung sliding sign, you know. So that means the patient has a pneumothorax. So what you will do next? What you will do? Again put a needle in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line, okay. So that means this patient had two tension physiologies. One is tamponade and the second is tension pneumothorax, okay. So that is what the context was here. Yeah, just close that. Yeah, we will go to the third. We will go to the third one. Is a patient, 34 year old gentleman with road traffic crash. There was a car which ran over the abdomen. There was tire marks here. So as a team leader, the CPR starts and I will be thinking in terms of Either the patient has got a both thoracic injury, patient may be bleeding in the thorax or in the abdomen or maybe have a pneumothorax, anything can happen, okay. So let us see as per the protocol what happens to the heart, yeah. So here you see the heart is beating, you know, it is beating slightly tachycardic, there is some anechoic shadow there but it is not all around the pericardium. Okay, that means the patient does not have pericardial effusion. But yes, there is pericardial pad of fat. The height is slightly tachycardic. Yeah, close the window. Yeah, let us go to the station B. That is a look at the breathing. Here you see, you can see there is absent lung sliding sign. That means the patient has got pneumothorax. Okay, tension pneumothorax. So what you will do? Again put a needle, right? So put in a needle and release the tension physiology. So after the cardiac lung, third I should see the IVC. So what should happen to the IVC? It should be dilated, isn't it? Tension pneumothorax means the IVC should be dilated. But what is happening here? You can see here. So this is volume depleted, isn't it? So what is happening? That means there is associated volume depletion. So what shall I do next? Do a fast scan, you know, you do a fast scan, yeah. Yeah. Can you switch off this light? Yeah, this one. This one, this one, quickly. Otherwise, they will not be able to see anything. You can see here, you can see here, hmm? Any children? Child no? Okay. So you can see here, Vimal, there is a can you point here. So what are you seeing? You can see an anechoic shadow, what, where Vimal is showing, an anechoic shadow. So that is suggestive of actually this, this light, this light. Light ban kar do, Yeah, so it will be better visualized, yeah. So you can see an anechoic shadow there, that means there is a fluid, okay. But why it is shaking? 
सर शेक क्यों कर रहे वाइट इज शेकिंग एनी बडी नॉट द रेसिडेंट बिकॉज सीपीआर इज गोइंग ऑन यू नो सो बिकॉज सीपीआर इज गोइंग ऑन द सीपीआर टीम इज वर्किंग ऑन द चेस्ट द पास कैनर द अल्ट्रासाउंड गाय इज वर्किंग ऑन द एबडाम सो दिस इज वन कंडीशन यू इवन सीपीआर इज गोइंग ऑन यू कैन डू सोनोग्राफी ओके so the same thing was there in the other windows even in the can you just show one more window then we'll go to the next here you can see here you can see the anechoic shad shadow and the spleen is shattered in that okay so it is criminal to actually receive patients like this because this patient only required a chest tube and a laparotomy which could have been done in a even a district hospital isn't it by the time you reaches the tertiary care go oh yes close the tertiary care it is too late okay so that is what it is yeah so this is a pelvic window you can see lot of blood there yeah so that means this is three index case where you can put the algorithm and you can do many more you know about all types of cardiac arrest and you see you have to be quite proficient so how you can guide the procedures you can do tube confirmation needle cricothyrotomy pericardiocentesis putting lines like center line even you can guide ultrasound guided intraosseous you know needle you can do that so that as per the 2015 guideline you can do tube confirmation this was and at the last segment of using point of care ultrasound is looking at the outcome does it actually tell you something that is my resuscitative effort is going to be helpful or not isn't it because it is labor intensive so we looked at some of the papers of early benefit so proficient coming with this activity that means the patient has a baseline cardiac activity from the literature this is what we did a interim study okay so this is just brief excerpts from our study is where we looked at the you know 110 uh, patient so there was a ROSC achieved in 75% of them you know and survival to discharge the 10 out of 175 actually was discharged in those patient who had a baseline cardiac activity so this is comparable to the international study where they looked at 24 hour survival in patient with cardiopulmonary arrest from a patient coming to you with this phenomena cardiac stand still which is better it is obviously this kind of patient will not survive to go out of the emergency department alive so that means this is this is the status of that you see that how it predicts so this is what we as a group of international council we think of that they can integrate point of care ultrasound in the pre hospital care setting okay because of smaller machines and expertise it can be done by a paramedic okay in the international literature and once he comes to the emergency department or when you start a acls protocol you can adjunct to pick up treatable causes of cardiac arrest okay or you can use it in the maternal cardiac arrest algorithm because here you are not saving one life you are saving two lives and if you it will be very important for you to pick up whether you should uh, you should be a, so that you can do ed cesarean section right for that ed cesarean section you should be a witness arrest the baby should be viable you know and you should take the decision quickly and by the fifth minute the baby should be out that is the guideline isn't it so let us see what happened to this this patient who fell down like the mother fell down from the third floor comes to the er you know is the baby alive you can see the baby was alive and the but the baby was not viable you know so within one minute you should take consent you should check the you know biparietal diameter of femur length to say you know the viability you can take the radiologist in also by the time he comes it will be too late so this is the guideline where you can make a difference in maternal cardiac arrest algorithm okay so what hap sorry i'm sorry so if the patient you know there is a return of circulation so what next you can do you can again use focus the tube may have got dislodged so you can check you know look at the airway 
do our air ultrasound. You must have created, or you may have created a pneumothorax by pressing the chest itself, breaking the ribs. 